Awesome. Good to go, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No worries. Okay, guys, we're going to get started here. Hope everyone can see my screen. Hello, and welcome to the second episode of Vested Interest, an online pitch competition for D2C e-commerce brands. My name is Rohan Kapoor. I manage our investor partnerships here at Gorgeous, and we're super excited to continue this series as a way to help companies scale. Uh, for those watching that are unfamiliar, Gorgeous is an e-commerce focused help desk, and we work with a ton of amazing brands along the DSC spectrum that would be great investment opportunities for investors, either on this panel, watching, or otherwise. The format of today is as follows. We will have three brands pitch to a panel of three investors. Each brand will have 10 minutes for their pitch, and they'll be sharing a deck. They're welcome to share anything with respect to the background of their business, how much capital they're looking to raise, what they do with the capital, revenue numbers and other stats, so on and so forth. The investors on the panel will then have collectively about 12 to 15 minutes to question them based on everything and everything that they said or did not say. And speaking of the investors, let's introduce them. On the panel today, we have Michelle Romana, Dragon on Dragon's Den and co-founder and president of ClearBank. Ken Kubik, VP of Acquisitions at Thoracio, and Jody Kessler, Principal at 3L Capital. I'm going to turn it over to them for some quick intros. And Michelle, would you mind kicking things off? Sorry, I didn't hear you there. All good. Would you mind kicking things off with an intro? Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm Michelle Romano. Um, I've been a serial entrepreneur my whole life. I've done everything from um, you know, I graduated engineering, figured out that worldwide supply of sturgeon caviar was down and moved to New Brunswick to build a fishery from scratch. That was my first business, boats, fishermen, my hands knee deep in fish, the whole nine yards. Um, and unfortunately then went to recession in 2008. So it was a bad time to be selling the world's most unnecessary luxury product. Um, from there, built a big e-commerce company uh, called Bytopia that now operates under Emerge Brands, should go public later this year. Um, started an early AI app called SnapSaves that we sold to Groupon in 2014, and then joined the cast of Dragon's Den six years ago, have done a ton of deals through the show, and through that discovered that founders were giving up way too much equity to basically go by Facebook and Google Ads, and so started ClearBank. Um, we give capital to founders on a non-dilutive basis, so we don't take any equity in your company. We do it all based on AI, and we've invested um, over a billion dollars in 3,000 different e-commerce companies, making us the largest e-commerce investor. Um, and I'm excited to hear the pitches today. I'm actually in filming, so this is also what I'm doing uh, tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. Very fitting time. Thanks a lot, Michelle. Ken, can you follow that up? Yep. Uh, so great to meet everybody. Ken Kubek, um, VP of Acquisitions at Thrasio. Uh, my background was I, I spent 13 years in investment management as an equities analyst and portfolio manager in the Boston area, uh, investing in small cap public technology companies. Uh, I then pivoted to the startup space and about four years ago, uh, joined a software tech startup in Boston that was catering to Amazon uh, businesses and sellers, you know, managing P&Ls, shipment plans, advertising management, et cetera. Um, and also ran an Amazon $15 million a year Amazon business at the same time. Uh, and then I joined Thrasio in uh, 2018. We had just started acquiring uh, private label brands, particu particularly brands that are native uh, to Amazon. Um, and it's been a great run. We've raised over $500 million of total capital. We have acquired 75 private label brands over the past 18 months. Um, and, you know, we're probably at this rate, buying five to seven businesses a month. That's awesome. Thanks a lot, Ken. Yep. And Jody. Yes, it's great to be here and and to be here with all, all of you incredible investors. Uh, my name is Jody Kessler. I am a, a principal and, and founding team member at, at 3L Capital. We are a multi-stage growth equity firm um, targeting both, both B2C and, and B2B businesses that are showing good good traction, solid unit economics, and that want capital to scale. Um, our target check size is 10 to 25 million. Um, I have been in, in and around the investing world for, for the last 10 years or so, started my career um, actually on the operating side at a private equity firm helping um, businesses scale primarily in and around e-commerce and, and digital. So have seen sort of the evolution of of e-commerce and and have watched kind of the you know last 10 years of of what that channel has done for 
for brands, both both new and old. Um, some of our investments on the on the consumer side include GoPuff, uh, Smile Direct Club, uh, the Real Real, uh, Daily Harvest, um, or just some of the couple that you may have heard of um, that that we've helped kind of scale. Awesome! Thanks a lot. Okay. And on the brand side, we have some amazing brands. Our first brand to present is Quality pitched by JM Fabrizi and Nick Ruotti. They are a sustainable apparel and accessory brand that's been around for 10 years. And lately they've done crazy well in growing and expanding their direct to consumer sales and continue to trend up. The second brand is Frida Rothman pitched uh, to you by, you guessed it, Frida Rothman. They are a fashion accessories company with a strong brand story and have been featured in major media channels. And finally, we have Life Elements, pitched by Kurt and Martha Van Inwigen. They've been making small batch and nature-based body care for 15 years and are most recognized for having the best CBD bath bombs on the market and have big plans to elevate their brand. At the end of the presentations, the investors and I will sync up to pick a winner based on the brand itself, potential for growth, overall likelihood to invest, and overall feel. The three participating brands will receive three months at Gorgeous, free audits of their ad accounts from Mute6, a web agency CRO audit from Blue Stout, three months of free backups from Rewind, 25% off uh, for six months of Pro with $99 in free SMS credits per month from Omnisend, and finally three months free and 100 bucks in credits from SMS Bump. The winner, in addition, will get a free fundraising session at Class Rebel, an influencer campaign giveaway from Kinship, an email marketing audit at Kronos, and one year free in 2000 in marketing spend at SwayPay. And most importantly, all brands are getting exposure to three seasoned investors. And finally, before I hop off here, as a thank you for joining this webinar, we've provided 100 Uber Eats codes for lunch today, first come, first serve. Travis is gonna throw the code in the chat right now. And while he does that, we're going to get started here and we're going to bring up JM and Nick for the first presentation in Qualitry. Just getting ready here. Morning, y'all. Pleasure to meet with you guys. Hey, JM, how are you? Doing well. Morning. How are you? Fantastic, fantastic. Thanks for joining us. You look great. Excited to hear this pitch. Lots of good things about this brand. You've got Ken, Michelle, and Jody uh, all set to, to be all ears here. You got 10 minutes. Fantastic. Let me pull up our pitch deck really quickly. Can you guys see my screen all right? Yes, sir. Yep. Cool. Yeah. So as I said, um, or as, as Rohan introduced me, my name is JM. I am the director of brand development here at Qualitry. And um, yeah, I feel really honored to be pitching alongside such awesome brands and excited to jump into it. So since the inception of Qualitry in 2010, uh, our mission has been to you know create durable, uh, fashionable, uh, versatile apparel and accessories uh, that function optimally from the mountains to the city. Um, since the beginning, our mission has been to create these products using the most sustainable inputs and production methods possible. And throughout the last 10 years, Qualitry has really stayed true to these values and continues to innovate as new production methods and increasingly eco-friendly inputs become available. Um, prior to 2010, our founder, Charlie Bessie, who was actually going to jump on this call today but had some last-minute business travel to California come up, uh, was one of the original team members uh, at Skull Candy. And during that time, Charlie worked closely in multiple areas throughout the business, uh, where in which he became you know, blatantly aware of the excess amounts of plastic uh, being wasted in the production and packaging processes. Um, he eventually you know, found and excelled at uh, roles within the marketing department and working closely with Skull Candy ambassadors and athletes. Uh, he created what is still to this day known as Skull Candy TV. He also realized how big of an influence fast food companies had in terms of sponsorship within the outdoor uh, action sports industry, uh, working with these folks. Um, so at that time, you know, there was a really clear movement that was starting to reemerge surrounding organic farming and sustainability. And what he wanted to do is help translate that movement into a clothing brand that catered to the idea that not only what you put inside your body was important, but what you put on your body was really important as well. 
Um, so shortly thereafter, Koala Tree was born on an organic farm out in Colorado and launched its first line of products uh, made out of inputs or made using inputs, I should say, such as you know organic cotton, X, uh, recycled x-ray film, recycled lunch trays, and recycled glass bottles. Um, Koala Tree was an early adapter uh, or adopter, excuse me, on the sustainability front and really sought to only work with factories on the cutting edge of sustainability that, that paid their employees fair wages. Um, and at that time, there were really only two main manufacturers that prioritized sustainability within their supply chains. Fast forwarding to 10 years later, um, and the brand has really continually sought to um, incorporate more sustainable inputs into our production methods as, as these new methods have become available. Today, uh, these three products on this slide make up about 70% of our sales. Uh, our Cthulhu blanket line, which is entirely made out of recycled nylon, uh, was first brought to Kickstarter in 2016. Um, which raised over $250,000. Um, that project was shortly followed up by our trailhead pants, um, which are made out of a proprietary blend of recycled nylon and polyester. They were launched on Kickstarter in 2017, raising you know, over $420,000 through crowdfunding uh, as our community on crowdfunding platforms was quickly expanding. And then more recently, um, our Evolution hoodie which launched in 2019 uh, and incorporates three cups of recycled coffee grounds and 10 plastic bottles per piece, uh, raised over $550,000 through crowdfunding campaign and you know, continues to be a bestseller on our site through to today. Um, you know, at this stage that we're at in time, I think it's become really evident for a lot of brands that conscious consumers now fully expect uh, sustainability from all the brands that they purchase from. And we're really proud to you know, have been on the forefront of this movement. Um, one of the many things that we've learned over the years is that people want to buy sustainable products, but people buy great products. Um, and we strive to make our products perform and function as well as an outdoor specific brand's products would, while still placing enough emphasis on um, you know, style and fashion so that they can be thoroughly loved and enjoyed you know, in the urban setting. Um, exceeding expectations with product quality is, is really what we're all about. Um, and we do this by, you know, obviously incorporating recycled materials, building in multifunctional features to the pieces themselves, um, using really durable and quality materials to, to build the products. And over time, you know, we've become a lot better at communicating this philosophy to our customers. So over the years, we've kind of pivoted our strategy to provide you know, this more inclusive experience for customers while allowing the business to expand and thrive in a, in a cash flow positive atmosphere. Um, so from 2010 to 2016, Qualtree was in 200 retail locations in about eight different countries. Um, and prior to that was prior to pivoting and beginning to rely heavily on you know, this community of crowdfunding backers for new product launches um, which allowed us to really validate these new products prior to bringing them to market. And again, this has really allowed us to move from a ca cash flow forward business, um, you know, putting up capital for production of new products and bring them in house to a cash flow positive business um, by cutting out retailers and essentially pre selling our products on, through crowdfunding campaigns. I think it's pretty evident that this approach has resonated well with our customers as you know our audience continues to expand and sales continue to steadily increase. Um, but it also allows us to really have full autonomy and control over marketing efforts, customer experience, you know, our inventory positions, and so on and so forth. A little bit about uh, who our customer is, um, definitely the conscious consumer. A lot of these folks live in a city, um, but are really in love with the outdoor lifestyle component of the Qualitree brand. And um, again, you know, these folks want to purchase products that function as well as an outdoor specific product would, but also look for, look and perform phenomenally in a in a city setting. On this slide, I think are some really uh, you know impactful metrics in terms of our reach um, that speak to the fact that we're well positioned to execute on our long range strategy. Um, 
And just a little side note, you know, it's really hard to essentially build communities like this, especially through social media nowadays with changes to algorithms and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, because of the longevity of the brand and, and our fan base, we already have a much larger organic reach uh, than a typical company at our stage would. To, to continue to grow and expand um, you know, this audience of, of brand supporters, uh, we utilize longtime supporters of the brand um, you know, while obviously continuing to find new ones that have really meaningful and engaged presences on social media. Another thing that we really rely on these folks for, along with our in-house team, is to create content for these new product launches through crowdfunding, um, as well as content surrounding the products that we already have in our line. And uh, throughout the last 10 years, we've been really fortunate to build relationships with um, media outlets, some of the most relevant ones within our industry, and, and garner a lot of well-earned press um, from these folks. Uh, something to note here is, um, you know, a lot of other brands to get this type of exposure and press um, often, often pay for this. And um, fortunately, through these relationships, we've been able to garner a lot of this press, you know, free of charge and kind of really turn these outlets into advocates and supporters of the brand. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Nick, our CFO, and kind of run through some of the financials and uh, let, him, let him take it from there. Is Nick hopping on with you, uh, JM, or is he on a he separate team? not. Team? He should be hopping on. He should be okay. hopping on. Um, OK, on. I got him. No worries. Okay. Uh, I do have yeah. to kick you off, though, JM, so I can invite him on. Totally okay? fine. OK. Totally fine. Hey Nick, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you guys Fantastic. doing? Fantastic. Can you, can you hear me okay? Loud and clear. Okay, cool. Um, well, I'll uh, I'll jump into this just since we uh, had a slight delay there. So, um, so based on uh, the strategy that Jam just laid out, so we have a five year plan. Our our goal is to get to twenty million. We feel like this is very achievable based on some of the assets that we do have. Um, so beyond getting to 20 million top line, um, currently we are cash flow positive. So um, in 2019, our EBITDA was about 400,000. Um, our top line was about 4 million. So from 18 to 19, we doubled sales going from 2 million to 4 million. So um, 2020, we've kind of, um, it's been a, a reset year. It's been the plan um, basically to hire some key positions and um, refocus on some of our product and um, really grow with uh, um, some of our vendor relationships. So um, we've been trending on plan for 2020. Um, so we'll do about 5 million this year. And then we feel like we're well positioned with just some of our vendor partners, products we have in the pipeline, um, and just some of the, the marketing assets to really scale the brand. And so with 20 million in sales, we're shooting for $4 million of EBITDA. So looking for 20% bottom line. Um, part of the shift you can see in blue, um, consistent to what JM went through, we're really shifting more of our focus to direct to consumer. So right now about half of our sales come from DTC. Um, over the five-year plan, um, as we continue to focus on this, we're looking to drive about 85% of our sales. So this helps our margin. Our, our current margin is about 54, 55%. So it's really healthy, but by moving uh, to 85% DTC, our margin will, will tick up above about 63, 65%. Um, so it gives us more control. It helps our margin and ultimately it lifts our bottom line. So that's kind of the, the thought process um, behind driving to DTC. And then if you go to the next slide. Okay, so th this is our last slide. So we, uh, we, we went through and just looked at our competitive positioning. So we feel like based on the product set we offer, 
um, who we are selling to. So we have uh, both male and female products um, are just direct to consumer. So during this pandemic, it's definitely highlighted um, just our DTC strategy. So we've his historically years ago, we were in retailers. So right now we're not in any retailers. We do 100% e-commerce and e-commerce with wholesalers. Um, and so with this, where a lot of companies have really struggled um, to gain traction during the pandemic, you now this has kept us light and we've been you know, trending on plan and it's allowed us to really flex during this kind of tighter period. Um, and then as Jan mentioned, we have a big following. So currently we've got 30,000 backers, um, you know, quarter million Instagram followers with the new algorithms. It's just, it's so tough to, to grow that base. And so us being around, this is our 10th year is a huge advantage. Um, and then some of the stuff that we do with giving back, you know, it's, it's a pretty common theme with companies now to give back, but it's so ingrained in, in really the DNA of quality. So, we have a lot of authenticity and, you know, our, our consumers and our fans really understand that that's super important to us. And then just the competitive price point. So because we source directly and we've had these relationships for a long time, our pricing is really great. It allows us to be a little bit more competitive. So we feel like quality is there with Patagonia and Cotopaxi and some of these smaller brands, but, our prices can be a little bit more competitive and allow us to still just bootstrap the growth of the company. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Nick. And we'll see if we can get uh, JM back on screen here. JM, if you want to stop sharing your slide deck, it might uh, invite you back on stage. If not, I'll get you back up. All right, we'll invite him back up stage. Okay, uh, maybe we can start with a question or two while he's getting back on stage and Nick can field it. There we is go. That, is that slide deck still showing for you guys? I, I no, no, that. it's only, it's a capacity of six, so we can't have the deck in both of you, but uh, we got you back both, so we're good to go. Cool. Sounds great, and yeah, really quick, just to speak to that Give Back initiative, we actually were at the uh, Utah Outdoor Summit all day yesterday, and um, I'll, I'll drop a little link here in the uh, in the comments, but fortunate enough to be recognized by the state um, for winning an award. It was called Outdoors Together for our 10,000 uh, mask give back initiative where we partnered with some other brands and donated 10,000 masks to the gateway communities of Southern Utah, um, which are experiencing like a 2000% increase in, uh, in visitation just because of COVID. So exciting stuff. Um, okay, I'll, I'll kick off kind of the first question for you guys. So one of the things that first of all congratulations on on everything you guys have built i love the idea of buying something that i only will own uh need to own once and that it's and then it's that durable um but i noticed there's like a five percent return rate you had on one of your slides and so that really cuts both ways because it's very very it sounds like it's you're not seeing a ton of repeat customers and so with the exception of new product launches like is there any how are how are you going to increase your repeat business because that becomes you know the lifeblood of so many of these e-commerce companies totally and and sorry if that was a little misleading the five percent return rate is not returning customers it's actually physical product coming oh, back that's fantastic okay yeah. i was unclear on that too so thanks for yeah. clarifying okay. yeah Industry yeah. Standard, yeah. why don't we actually talk about repeat customers um and it's good to know that that is a very competitive return rate on product return but like yeah tell me about that part i'm sorry about repeat customers repeat yeah like what percentage of your customers repeat like how how often like are what you know, are people just buying single items or like, can you, how do you, how do you continue to grow with your own user base? Totally. Well, I'm sure Nick can speak to this a little bit more, but really, um, you know, through these, these crowdfunding campaigns, it's allowed us to foster the sense of community with customers. So not only are we seeing a ton of overlap in between repeat backers from one crowdfunding campaign um, to another, but we're also really able to leverage, you know, this pool of, of 30,000 people that continues to grow with every campaign launch um, and get their feedback on upcoming products, um, you know, that we're, that we're planning on launching them in the future. Yeah, and as far as uh, just numbers, so 
Now, half of our sales are um, just on our Shopify platform. And within Shopify, we have about a 25% repeat customer. Um, so we feel like we have we have a very loyal customer base. As far as the other 50% of our sales, you know, a lot a lot of that is um, you know, the crowdfunding, which JM just spoke to. And then the rest is wholesalers. So we sell to a lot of uh, um, box subscription companies and um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say a lot. So we have about five or so. And those are um, pretty consistent orders. So, you know, I guess it's hard to really quantify that, but you know, the repeat customer rate there is 100%. But obviously, a little bit different metric for uh, for ecom. And these are like an outdoor box company that would include one of your products in it. Yeah, think like bespoke post, nomadic box, folks like that. And what is your um, on the trailing 12 months marketing spend? or talk to your kind of customer acquisition cost on the direct side? Yeah, so for our marketing spend, um, so again, the, ma the majority of our marketing spend is focused on the e-commerce. So our marketing spend is about 15% uh, of sales. So if I think the last, tw last 12 months, um, it's probably, about seven, seven hundred thousand across the board between paid advertisers, um, uh, third-party partner platforms, influencers. Um, you know some of our content that we're doing. Um, so yeah, so it's about seven hundred k. Or it's about a twelve dollar cap if your basket size is eighty bucks. Did I get that right? Sorry, say it one more time. Is it a twelve dollar CAC if it's fifteen percent of sales and your basket size is eighty dollars? Um, yeah. That, too low. yeah, that would make sense. Okay. And is that is that break even on the first order? Are you are you making money for every transaction, or are you losing money on the first transaction? Yeah, for for Shopify, we're making money on the first order. Got it. And again, it's it's a little skewed because you know half of our business is outside of e-commerce, um, but yeah. And it, you think about growth um, going forward, and and what's going to drive that? Obviously, big big focus on on e-commerce, which is great. Um, how do you think about just moving the needle there? And is it new products? Is it you know selling the same products to existing customers? I think you guys have done what is seemingly a great job, um, you know, building this mission driven company, building a bunch of really strong hero products. But how do you think about getting to that, you know, continuing to grow that base? Um, yeah. So as far as the base, one, one of our um, real advantages is again, just our longevity. So we have about three years of product already in the hopper. So most of our products um, we, we basically do R and D and trial for about two years. So, you know, going back to the quality and you know, if you think of, about a Arcteric or a Patagonia, you know, they have huge R and D budgets. We, we don't have a huge R and D budget, but, um, because, you know, Charlie and JM and, and the whole team really lives the brand you know, everyone's outdoor enthusiasts. And so we have, as we get prototypes, we're, um, getting those in the hands of, you know, friends and family and influencers. And so beyond just having things in the hopper, which will either, you know, launch on a, a crowdfunding to help with um, just cash flow, or we've started to move more to just doing uh, direct pre-sales on Shopify. So it is kind of a mixture. So beyond new product though, we've over the last year, um, we've really started to dig into the data and, that's where we've had a lot of success over the last two years of growing and kind of realizing, you know, what um, what the consumer wants and what what really sells. So we're really focusing on our trailhead. Where in the past we, you know, it was kind of more of a ad hoc ordering. So now we we have a full time role that's just focused on supply chain. And so over the last few months we've had a lot of stockouts, and that's pretty common. So we've kind of reset with this new position. And with one of our partners who's really focused on, you know, making sure we don't stock out. So we've cut our lead time down in, to half. So we really, we really think a ton of the upside is just 
focusing on what we do really well, which is our trail headline, the pants and shorts. And on the R and D side, I guess, is that, is it being, you know, in collaboration with your suppliers? Um, you mentioned that, that you think your supply chain is a sustainable competitive advantage. Maybe just talk a little bit more about your suppliers, where they based and, you know, in terms of the materials, as this is obviously I think, you know, a pretty secular movement in terms of sustainability. Um, do you have enough, do they have enough capacity to deliver on the future product roadmap? Absolutely. We yeah. were really fortunate to you as such a small brand to, to work with suppliers um, such as Syntex, Everest. These are a lot of the same factories and suppliers that really large companies like North Face and Patagonia use. Um, so we'll definitely, there's no question about scaling, um, you know, with the partners that we currently have. And, and just on a on a fund from a fundraising standpoint or, or driving that growth, um, you know, how, how do you how would you use proceeds from from a capital raise or from you know some alternative source of funding that could potentially accelerate you guys faster than sort of the the four year get to get to twenty million dollar plan? I think you might be muted, Nick. You are correct. Yeah, so um, sorry about that. Bit, up to this point, we've been able to just bootstrap the growth. Um, so obviously, you know, doubling um, top line is not painless when, you know, you're working with just your funds. But um, so with uh, use of capital, we basically focus on um, getting a, some additional bodies in here. Just, you know, people are wearing a lot of hats. Um, so really focusing on some of the uh, some of the things we've been using third parties for, you know, site conversion optimization. Um, I think there's some opportunity, uh, more opportunity around merchandising and and supply chain, um, and then also you know product development. Uh, quite frankly, so a lot of that is um, you know it's been internal, and so I think we could really um, ramp up um, the product development and inventory. So just basically giving us a buffer to make sure that we can not stock out and have sufficient inventory. So part of that is with our partner and we've, you know, we've been working very directly with them to supply forecasts and there really is no cap. I mean, they're, they're hungry and, um, you know, they basically said they're willing and based on our five year forecast, they can grow with us. Um, so that would be a lot of, um, where the source of funds would go just inventory. Hey guys, I'm gonna jump in here just cause we're at time. We have to move on to the next one. Uh, all great questions and, and great pitch uh, to both you, Nick and, and you, JM. Phenomenal brand, of course. We got a couple of new customers in the chat, as you can see, uh, which is phenomenal. Uh, yeah, gonna awesome. kick you off stage for now. We're gonna bring up Frida from Frida Rothman, but uh, we'll be in touch after if anyone wants to carry on some conversations from here. Cool, thanks so much, guys. Thanks guys. Yeah, great meeting cool. you guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, gonna bring up Frida. And while I do that, uh, for whoever's watching in the chat, we're gonna toss a link for a free two months at Gorgeous. If you click that, uh, we'll get you in the door ASAP. Thanks to Travis. Hey there, Frida, how's it going? Hi, am I muted or I'm good? We're good. You're okay. perfectly fine. Yep, sound fantastic, crystal clear. All right. Um, the, not much to say here, except we have a phenomenal brand, phenomenal story, and you're going to tell it really well. I have no doubt about that. Um, the floor is yours, Frida. Go for it. Thank you Get so much. Minutes. Hi, everyone. It's such an honor to be here and to be speaking to all of you. Um, my name is Frida Rothman. I am the founder and CEO of the Frida Rothman Jewelry and Accessory Company. Uh, I launched my company in 2013, and I was inspired by my grandparents. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about my grandparents. All four of my grandparents were Holocaust survivors, and uh, they taught me everything that I know about life itself. Um, I grew up across the street from my grandparents, and they were a huge inspiration in my life. They taught me what it means to live, to laugh, to love. What always inspired me about them was the fact that they were able to continue their lives 
to get married, to have children, to raise a family, and of course to teach me everything about my faith. And those are the uh, characteristics that I look for in teaching my own four children. And that is the source of the inspiration for everything that I do and all parts of the collection itself. Um, my jewelry is meant to inspire and empower women. Uh, since we launched the collection in 2013, we have uh, partnered together with Nordstrom, Bloomingdale's, um, Neiman Marcus, and most recently in June of uh, 2020, we launched with QVC uh, at a sellout event, and we have two more events lined up for November and December of this year. Um, I'm going to do a little screen share so I can kind of take you through the brand itself. Uh, let's do this. Do you guys see my screen share? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, hold on. You see the little icon that says there major screen sharing? Yep. Yeah. Do you guys see it now? There we go. Okay. So welcome to Brooklyn. This is kind of my world. And um, this is uh, our model wearing our signature collection with our mixed metal look, kind of what I'm known for. Um, really taking you into the Brooklyn uh, experience. My brand is known for elevating your Brooklyn grit into wearable glamour for the modern empowered woman. The four core values of my brand is what we really stand for is glamour, craftsmanship, all of the jewelry is a sterling silver based metal, heritage, my family background. I'm also a second generation jeweler. My family has been in the jewelry industry close to 40 years. And of course the inspiration of all of the collections. Um, this is me. Um, I was born and raised in Brooklyn. I am also the mother of four children. And my goal for my brand and everything that I do is to remind every woman of her inner strength. Uh, this is the picture of my grandparents. Um, everything that I do is to honor their legacy and also uh, to always, whenever I see their faces, their pictures are actually here in my office, in my space. And I speak about a lot about them. Um, the reason I find it so important to always speak about them is because whenever we're going through a rough day or we're having a hardship in life or you know I'm having a bad day at work or in business and I see them and it always reminds me that their optimism, their perseverance and their hope for life, everything is going to be okay, especially going through our COVID crisis, everything is going to be okay. Um, you know, every, they went through the worst horrors of humankind and they were st still able to not only survive but also to thrive in Brooklyn. Um, as I'm gonna take you through some of the product, you'll see some of the beauty that I find in Brooklyn itself, which is a source of inspiration for all of the pieces. So the necklace that you see here, um, this is part of our signature collection, one of our most iconic pieces from the collection, um, is that mixed metal. I remember meeting the Nordstrom buying team at my very first jewelry trade show in 2013. And they fell in love with the collection with that mixed metal look. It was nothing like they had in their, in their jewelry cases. And um, as you can see from the pendant itself, you know, when you think of inspiration for jewelry or for accessories or something beautiful, you don't normally think of Brooklyn. You think of the gorgeous ocean, you think of France or Europe or something like that. But I specifically look for areas in Brooklyn that are super gritty. So one side of the pendant has that crisscross design work that's inspired by the railroad tracks that's right outside my office in Brooklyn. And on the flip side of it is inspired by the manhole covers in New York City and adding those gorgeous feminine embellishments to the pieces itself. When we launched the collection, which is interesting with Nordstrom, we did launch in 25 doors. Now for those that are familiar with retail, you know that it's a slow progression to growth. It's a five door, a seven door, it's never a 25 door launch. So that was really huge for me and, and for the brand. Of course, all the base metals are sterling silver. So we also sell to close to 200 uh, retailers, fine jewelry retailers across the country as well. Um, the key investment highlights, uh, why I believe you should invest in this brand is six reasons. One is I am a female founder and CEO. Um, we are also a fashion accessory brand that specializes in jewelry, handbags, and eyewear. And what I always talk about is how it really is an extension to your wardrobe. We have a really strong brand narrative, which I'm really excited to talk to you about, is our Women of Strength campaign. 
There are also multiple actionable growth opportunities across different categories and different product lines. We have a really high customer engagement and high customer returning, return coming back to us. And we have a very experienced management team. Women of Strength. Um, this campaign was focused on real women, real stories that are truly real heroes. This campaign was launched in January of 2020. Obviously, we did not know what was coming down the pipeline in regards to COVID. I launched this campaign. It meant really so much to me and to my company. We honored and highlighted Holocaust survivors that were living here in Brooklyn. And I designed a very special bracelet, a strength bracelet, as you can see in the next slide. And this bracelet was specifically designed to have the black texture in the background, which is inspired by the streets of New York City. It's where they gave these men and women a second chance at life. And the word strength is written on both sides. So it's on the top side, which when you look at the bracelet, you give yourself strength. And when you flip the bracelet and you turn it to the other side, you're passing strength on to the next person. And obviously I designed this bracelet back in November and uh, we launched in January in partnership with QVC, which was a complete sellout and also with our direct-to-consumer channels, which I'll tell you more about. And it retailed at $3.95. I think we had about five waiting lists um, for this bracelet itself. And of course, we had um, a charitable component to it. I had never partnered with a charitable um, a charity before. I really wanted it to feel right, and I really wanted it to fit our brand narrative. Um, through the sale of the Strength Bracelet and across our e-commerce sites, we were able to donate over 10,000 meals to feed the elderly here in New York. Um, and then of course, once COVID hit, we realized how uh, the elderly really were affected um, during COVID and a lot of people couldn't get food. I myself put on masks and gloves. I got my kids, my neighbors involved and we were going out. Obviously this picture wasn't taken during COVID. I'm not wearing a mask, but, um, and we went out and actually delivered food and my company was able to donate, donate 10,000 meals um, because of that. So we are going to continue this charitable component of our work. I just want to tell you, touch a little bit more about the women of strength. This campaign resonated so well with women across uh, the country. We're going to continue this campaign. We're actually partnering with um, QBC. On November 11th, we're launching a women of strength honor bracelet honoring women in the military also retails at $3.95, and we have already identified 10 women that are going to be our women of strength. And just, just want to give you a little, little shout out to the lady in this image. This is Dolly Rabinowitz. She's 96 years old in this image. She is an Auschwitz Holocaust survivor, and I grew up with her. She, I was really good friends with her great niece. So she was our hero and our woman of strength. And of course, we do have one-on-one -on -one interviews with her and really inspired so many women across the country. I also want to talk about how accessories matter. Accessories really extend a woman's wardrobe. One of my favorite things to do is, you know, when I go to these trunk shows or events, or even through virtual events, where I can see a woman walk into a room, she's dressed in her whatever outfit she chose, and in my mind I'm like, if I had that perfect bag or the perfect pair of shoes and earrings, and accessories just to me really, I can only show you the shoes that I'm wearing today, to me I really think that it finishes a look when you put that great layered necklace, that stacked bangle, um, really completes that look. Um, we also have handbags and sunglasses, which was an extension to the jewelry. And what's interesting to note about these categories is I, I'm also a mentor for young designers. And one thing I always tell um, the young designers is when you're going to add another category, make sure that you're different. What, like what made me special to Nordstrom was because I had something that not everybody else had. So I added jewelry elements to the handbag and of course using that signature matte gold on the eyewear as well. Uh, for those that are familiar with the brand, we are really well known for stacking bracelets. Um, women keep coming back to continue to add to their stack, um, add multiple dimensions, and of course that stunning mixed metal adding the grit of Brooklyn um, of that black and gold finish. And these are some of our best-selling hoops that we sell as well with that mixed metal and of course always inspired with that Brooklyn inspiration in the background. So just give you a little uh, e-commerce overview and what's going on with my business as far as direct to consumer. So obviously when I started my business, we were primarily wholesale, working with our wholesale partners. That was the bulk of my business. 
over the last two years, we've really um, taken our business more to direct to consumer. I always say we're lucky to be living in this time and age where we're able to reach our consumer directly and um, through all of our social media channels. And we have our ROAS to date right now is a 6.5x. Our Shopify reports a 235% increase in sales uh, year to date in 2020 compared to 2019, which I feel very, very blessed to have that, especially in a COVID year, we've seen growth. Um, return rates, meaning not returning customer, because I heard that earlier, our return rate for e-commerce is about 10%, which, I, which for an e-commerce, that's a really good number. Um, I also want to talk about the strategic growth initiatives for our direct-to-consumer. So this is what I'm the most excited about. Uh, in January, we, again, because our focus for our business for 2020 was all about direct-to-consumer. How are we going to continue to grow that business? We partnered with brand stylists across the country. We now have close to 100 brand stylists that each one of those stylists have between 500 to 1,000 clients. And these women shop wardrobes for their customers. So if you're familiar with brands like Limited Editions for Her, Carlisle, Carla, which is a $100 million company, these stylists um, style and dress their clients, uh, but they don't have any jewelry and accessories. So we right now have our own FR brand stylists, almost 100 of them, that have not only met their goals so far, they've beaten their, their goals month over month, and that is how we are building almost an army of stylists across the country. Um, we are thrilled with this growth and we see huge opportunity with additional categories outside of just handbags, eyewear, and jewelry. They're starving for more. They love the brand story. They love the jewelry. Um, they think the quality is amazing. And again, who my customer is, she really is a more, um, she's a professional woman. She's a professional working woman. She's looking to her stylist to dress her from head to toe. And this has been a huge opportunity, huge growth opportunity. Um, we are looking to raise uh, $2.5 million in the fall. And let me tell you a little bit about the use of proceeds. We really want to embed ourselves more in the customer journey um, through technology. I have this dream of really elevating that experience through starting their stack. I really want to own that category of, of stacking and make that experience a really uh, incredible virtual experience. I also want to deliver a more personalized experience to, ever, to, to you know, retain higher customer retention, invest in both CRM technology and resources to improve clientele through enhanced customer data. Um, we also want to continue and to communicate consistent relevant brand story across all channels and customer interactions. And uh, that's just another picture of our strength stack. This is part of our industrial finish collection. We have four seasonal collections a year, your traditional fall, holiday, spring, and summer. So that is pretty much our investor deck. If anybody has any questions, how do I get back to, there we go. Awesome, thanks a lot, Frida. Sure. Let's, uh, let's circulate the room for any questions that come through from the investor side. Hey, Frida, um, really gorgeous stuff. Um, how, how, do you, how do you position yourselves in the market in terms of where you fit on the like luxury versus costume versus um, you know, jewelry spectrum of? Uh, sure, so if, as far as brand wise, I like to compare myself, but this is actually why it was really easy for me to open so many doors in the fine jewelry realm is because I want you to think about your David German here, which is sterling, silver, and diamonds. And then you have your Kendra Scott of the world. There really isn't anybody in between. So you have your $65 earring, and then you have your you know, $750 or $1,000 with David German. My price point ranges between $295 and $550. Actually, our average order value is almost close to $400. So that's kind of the space that we live in. And my customer is in apparel, if you want to think of what she's wearing or what other brands she really likes. She likes Tory Burch is a great comparison. Um, coach, brands like that. Got it. And what was your revenue in uh, 2019 and then 2020? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What was that, Michelle? Oh, I was thinking, what was your revenue last year and then this year so far? And then what's contributed to the growth during COVID? 
All right, so the revenue itself, if you're interested to learn more about the offer, I'm happy to talk about that offline. Um, but our growth has been, for, for year over year, we've been at uh, about 200% um, growth the year before. Um, is, like, is this like sub 5 million, sub 10 million, sub, like just like a range then? Okay, so it's between uh, three to five. Three to five, got it. Cool, mm -hmm. and, and what contributed to the growth um, during COVID? Like was it, as performing was it like what what allowed you to drive that growth so the growth from covid was obviously the strength campaign and the strength story is really what just blew out of the water i think the story itself resonated so well with so many women across the country and another thing is that you had a, you have a lot of people spending a lot of time on zoom and we have found that earrings and necklaces and anything that's happening from up here has really grown. Um, so I think that also played a big role. Right. And jewelry and accessories in general is doing really well um, during this time. I know apparel isn't doing that great, but jewelry and accessories somehow, Women's Wear Daily keeps reporting how well that category is doing. And is most of the e-commerce or is it the whole like what's happening on the wholesale partner side just given so that's a great that's a great panel. question yes that's a great question so obviously we know what's happening in the world of regular retail your Nordstrom's of the world your Neiman Marcus we had tremendous business there and obviously those numbers are no longer there but we had a really a silver lining um, we partnered with QVC and QVC to me is like ideal. You're doing retail, you're virtual selling, they've got the whole system down pat. Um, and that's been really, really successful. So we're really excited about that partnership. Our wholesale partnerships, as far as your Neiman Marcus, your Nordstrom's, we are still continuing that business. We're kind of like, you know, limping along, but we're confident that we're gonna get back up there as soon as you know, the world becomes a normal place. Who knows what's going to happen? I do have virtual trunk shows booked with them, with Nordstrom in September and October. We're starting to book up our calendar. And on that note, also, you asked the question earlier is how we stayed alive during this time. I probably hosted 200 trunk shows during this time virtually. I probably touched thousands of women. I took it upon myself to kind of take advantage of this time because women are home and we can speak directly to them. I didn't have to travel anywhere. And through our stylists, we were able to get hundreds and hundreds. I, I have one right after this, I have a virtual trunk show, they're based in Florida, inviting their women, and then that's how we were selling. So that's been key to, to that growth during this time. How, um, Frida, how many, so out of the 100 stylists you have, I guess how many, roughly how many units have you sold through? Um, I don't know unit number, but I do know dollar amount. Um, we are almost at that half a million dollar mark uh, with the stylist alone. And keep in mind that that number keeps growing um, as more stylists join. So obviously in January, what we had maybe 10, you know, and every single month, every yep. day I'm sending out welcome packets, there's more and more joining. And and who's who, who else is on the team? And are you, do, are you the main... So designer. I am the CEO. Actually, my husband is my business partner. He is the chief operating officer. And then we have two uh, directors for our direct-to-consumer business who have years of experience building this channel of stylist businesses. Um, so they came from the company uh, Worth, and uh, they are with our team now. We also have our head of brand who comes previously from um, Furla and uh, she does all the marketing. We also have a creative director um, who does all that gorgeous imagery that you just saw. Um, we spend a lot of time on our marketing images to kind of draw and tell the story. Um, we also have a large team as far as we do all of our packing, packaging in-house. Um, so we have our, our office here in Industry City in Brooklyn, which is a very industrial area in Brooklyn. Um, so we are a team of about, um, 17 to 18 outside of, of course, our stylists and our um, uh, sales reps on the road. It's really beautiful. It's, uh, it's really nice. Your images are beautiful. Like I can see why they're, they're translating well online for sure. Thank you. Where are you finding your customers online as you've started to invest more in, in your direct to consumer channel? So Facebook has been our, our highest conversion um, as far as uh, you know ROAS and, and getting 
new customer base. It's obviously targeting who she is. She's 35 plus, she's a professional working woman. Um, it's finding the right audience. You know, sometimes you hit that vein and every single day those orders are coming in and sometimes you kind of have to find a new group. But it's understanding who she is, where she is, and um, you know, doing the work and, and, and targeting those customers. Fantastic, awesome. Uh, any last questions before we hop off here? Great. Thanks a lot, Frida. That was a phenomenal presentation. And uh, as we indicated, as you told, phenomenal story as well. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. Great. Great. Awesome. So I'm going to pull Rita off, uh, Frida off stage now, and we're going to invite Kurt up, who's going to be presenting Life Elements. Uh, we're in uh, California. There we go. Where we're, sorry, folks. We're in California where we're having a lot of issues with fires and things. And so our internet has been in the flux throughout the week. There, we're having wow. blackouts every once in a while. So our apologies. No worries. Oh, uh, glad, glad you could make it. I thought I had to end the webinar right there, but um, uh, we're, we're glad to have you. I know. Sorry, sorry. So, sorry we're ready to roll. No, no worries. No worries. And you, you've got the sign in the background, so that makes up for it. It's looking good. Um, everybody, this is this is Kurt and Martha. They are here on behalf of Life Elements, phenomenal brand in the CBD space as well. And uh, Kurt, you can, uh, you can take the floor. And if you want to share your screen, you're welcome to, of course, by just clicking the little icon right on your uh, right on your screen there. Oh jeez! <laughs> We're on the screen. Uh, if you hover, if you hover over your name, oh, over your uh, over, over your, your video, screen. you should be able to click a okay. enable screen sharing. There yep. We go. There we go. There we go. You know, we've had 25 years in technology. You would think that we'd be smarter than this. <laughs> so again, our apologies. Okay. Can you see that? Is your screen all right? You guys see our screen all right? No, we can't see it yet. Just click the enable screen sharing and then you should be able to select the tab or the window that you want to share. Oh, select the screen. All right. Hello. Now we're going. Jeez, Marie. Here we go. I have to cut your time to three minutes now, unfortunately. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we will. We will roll through this. Uh, we will roll through. Just this. go through it. Yeah. No worries. Uh, no worries at all. We'll uh, we'll get your your lot of time. Um, the floor is yours. So all you have to do is toggle through, and um, you're good to go. I'll leave it to you guys. All right. So we're coming to you guys from our production facility in Atascadero, California which is on the central coast, halfway between LA and San Francisco. We have been making body care, uh, natural body care products for 15 years. We look at ourselves as a, a standard commercial CPG brand. And we started experimenting with uh, CBD and uh, THC blends uh, in 2015 or so and we were very early to market with the CBD products in about 2017 and now as we've accelerated uh, the CBD is such an accretive ingredient for uh, body and for health that we have uh, seen it as being a primary uh, driver for our growth so while we have uh, 30 SKUs ranging from facial care to uh, pain products this is where the crux of everything is. There's a lot of pain in the world. There's a lot of anxiety, you know, and the numbers uh, speak for themselves. We work with a lot of uh, uh, first responders, retired military who have chronic pain, and they're just simply tired of all the opioids and uh, all the other things that they're taking. At the same time though, this market is very crowded. Uh, it actually thinned out quite a bit during COVID, but there's a lot of mis misinformation. There's a lot of greenwashing. 
And this concept of, you know, reputation and word of mouth is huge. And it's been very good for us just during the height of COVID, you know, our repeat purchase rate was, was over 40%. So we think that kind of speaks to the quality of our products. You know, the key thing for us is that, that people trust us. They trust us with their bodies and they are uh, sharing that information with their friends or their family. And uh, we look at our customers not as a demographic or a target market. They are really passionate people who, who trust the efficacy of our products and the, and the positive visceral benefits that they produce. And I'm going to tell you how we do it. So if you look at the market size, we fit into this, this interesting intersection. You know, the, 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 the natural beauty space is huge and we focus on that very specific uh, component of body care. It's a multi-billion dollar business. And when you combine it with uh, what is now a fast growing CBD market, you know, we're looking at somewhere around uh, $20 billion uh, for the CBD uh, business just in the United States. And if you look at who's using CBD, on a, on a daily basis, you can see the numbers on the right. But what's really interesting to us about this is we have a lot of millennials uh, uh, who are our customers, but we also have a lot of baby boomers. The baby boomers may be a slightly smaller segment in terms of usage, but they've got 10X the spending power. And we see we know this from the data from our, uh, our transactions, as well as a lot of anecdotal evidence about uh, how these people are using it. And, we obviously fall into that category, so we get the baby boomers. So the magic happens here in California. Uh, we moved into a, a new uh, facility in Atascadero. We do everything here. We produce it. Uh, we do all our packaging, warehousing. We hold classes and seminars, uh, and we fulfill from our uh, shop. Uh, Martha and I both have entrepreneurial and executive experience. We've scaled businesses. And uh, we're currently working with uh, six employees, and that's the crew. That's how we get things done. So like NPR says, let's do the numbers. Uh, historically, over the last uh, three years, our revenue has been split almost equally between uh, our website sales and our retailers. Last year, we broke uh, annual $1 million, which was cool for us. We we're very excited about that and we had a really healthy wholesale business. What happened this year is that the wholesale business retailers fell off the, you know, fell off the plate. There was nothing there. And so we're about 20% off of where we were last year. Um, but our, our DTC business has continued to improve. Our efficiency has also improved because we're now in uh, this existing space that we have. We've got really good metrics in terms of average order value and, and uh, customer and our conversion rate direct from the website. I think this is the most important slide in the deck uh, because this is our differentiation in the market. We use clean ingredients. We use, and the, these ingredients uh, are formulated in our, in our shop. They are our own proprietary formulas. We own them outright. Uh, we create them. And we do what we call a uh, craft process at scale. We use good manufacturing processes. Uh, we hand pour a lot of things. We can, uh, we make our own base oils and we can do that at scale up to a thousand uh, plus units uh, a day in our facility. We do not use co-packers. We have in the past for other products. And there's something about co-packing that doesn't really work so well. You lose control you lose quality, you lose the flexibility, uh, and you lose the ability to use a lot of these, these very special clean ingredients. While we have 30 SKUs, our top selling products relate to anxiety and pain. And the best selling product is that bath bomb that you see in the middle. They are the best bath bombs on the market. Uh, we know that from our reviews and from the media coverage that we have. We use what is called a water soluble broad spectrum CBD product. And what that means is that when you drop that bath bomb into the water, it dissolves completely. It's not an oil floating on the top. That's a huge distinction between what a lot of other brands use. They use uh, powders or other things that are very simple and you got oil floating on top. We 
when we make our bath bombs, we use multiple strengths and, and we're talking about a fingernail size uh, dose of bath bomb of CBD in each bath bomb. We have a technology uh, process that we use. It's AI driven, it helps us calculate the exact dosage that goes into each single bath bomb. We don't mix it in a big batch. We put it into each bath bomb before it gets pressed. And transparencies, uh, you know, it's, it's overused these days, but it really is the core of our ethos in terms of communicating to our customers and our community. So how do we market? Everything that we've done uh, up to uh, Q1 this year has been uh, straight up. We, did, we didn't do any sponsored ads, paid advertising. As it relates to CBD, it's a really tricky uh, process. We have relied heavily on social in our existing uh, email list, and we're in the process of moving from MailChimp to Clavio, which gives us a lot more opportunity for segmentation, automation, and customer lifecycle management. Uh, our paid, we've, we've run this gauntlet through Google and Facebook and Instagram to be able to, to now uh, have ads, and that's just getting started. Uh, we've been working on it for a few months, and we'll have all cylinders firing for the holiday season. Now, what's interesting is that the average order value just on, on the ad side is actually much higher than what we're doing straight up through Shopify. And our ROAS is it's kind of all over the map. Facebook is really draw, drawing this one down. Um, everything else is, is in, the, in the high fours. And like we said, our social media is, is consistently one of our sales drivers direct to the website. So what are we looking for? Uh, we're looking for $750,000 and we are self-funded to date. Uh, we have a small uh, friends and family loan. And what we see in the marketplace is there's a ton of spend to, uh, to create new awareness and new customers. We, and I hate saying this in front of a group of investors, but we are not a sales driven organization. We have been catching incoming uh, leads and sales since we started. And that's really been a production issue and not a sales issue. So first thing on the list is to improve our production equipment and the folks that go along with that. A very important part of what we're doing is, is moving our, our vessels, our containers from plastic to more sustainable uh, products like glass. And there, this is a, a very complicated multi-dimensional um, chess game to be able to create these packages that are sustainable get the branding dialed in and have, make sure that it fits into your production line. So, so that's very important to us. Um, we make a lot of our own uh, oils and raw ingredients, but we live in this amazing uh, location where we have access to hundreds of different farms, biodynamic farms. And so we're beginning the process of being able to draw those ingredients uh, directly from where we live. Customer acquisition to, to now keep up with that production. Uh, we have expanded uh, some analytics pay to media, uh, driven paid media, and a lot more promotion to the website. There's a huge opportunity to expand our retailer channels, um, uh, major retailers, of course, but we sell to a lot of practitioners. So think chiropractors, massage therapists, and while we don't do private label, we actually are creating products for other people who are private labeling our business. That's a very lucrative opportunity that uh, we will continue to pursue. Uh, obviously, accelerating PR, and there's opportunities internationally as well, which we dipped our toe in the water for that and decided to back out until we were ready. Uh, and our website is our home. It's our store, and it's the hub of everything. So um, there's always practices and new things that we can do there, and that's where we would like to use the money. So. That is a super quick <laughs> introduction to who we are, and uh, we're open to answering some questions. That's awesome. Thanks a lot, Ken. And right on, oh, sorry, excuse me. Thanks a lot, Kurt and Martha. That was right on time. Uh, anyone want to jump in with some questions here? Yeah, I, uh, nice to meet you. I, I have a question just on um, the margins, typical margins for the product, given your uh, high quality sourcing and supply chains? So our, our gross margins at the top are in the mid to high 70s, and that's all in for sourcing the, the products, uh, manufacturing them, packaging, everything. Did 
this look it's a it looks like a really cool product i'd love to see if it takes away some of my back pain so oh, uh very cool and uh i know it's not um always easy to like use all these ingredients together um oh shoot oh yeah um i was just gonna ask so i'm gonna be sure to chance so right now on facebook and instagram they've removed the restrictions uh to sell cbd products right so you should be able to scale quite differently than you had been able to previously so the answer is yes but there are a lot of caveats and okay. uh there like i said navigating the gauntlet has been very tricky so for facebook instagram pinterest google they all have restrictions and the restrictions uh, relate to very specific use of of terms like cbd and so um Facebook seems to be the one that has the most variability in adhering to standards. And I think it boils down to uh, spend and connections, uh, quite frankly. But uh, we, we have got uh, some good traction, especially with Google. And that's where we're seeing the most, uh, the highest ROAS. And then obviously, uh, retargeting ads have done very well for us. Great. Uh, uh, no, on the um, the repurchase rate, are, are there any specific products um, that have a much higher repurchase rate? Absolutely. Anything with pain that has to do with pain or sleep, um, those those are our biggest sellers. So our ache and pain relief stick, the bath bombs, our CBD body oil, and our CBD body lotions that can be layered uh, amongst each other. We offer for everything in multiple strengths. So if somebody has a pain level of one to ten, here's a product for you. If your pain is higher than that, here's the second pro here's another product. And so those tend to be the highest sellers. We serve a lot of, like we said, uh, we had a police officer in here yesterday, and they're using it uh, to just. The thing about the bath bombs, you can immerse your entire body in there so that that inflammation receptors that the CBD is acting on relaxes all that soft tissue. So it doesn't do much for nerves, uh, but it does a lot for muscles, joints, ligaments, tissues. And, and that's one reason why it's also, also a good uh, facial product because anything that's happening on your skin is typically inflammation. And that's where CBD is very accretive to the other ingredients that we use. We have a lot of uh, folks that use our skin repair stick for eczema, psoriasis, all types of rashes, uh, skin related, and that too is a is a great seller. How are you guys guiding customers? It sounds like just for the breadth of product and the conditions that you're you're helping treat. What what sort of personalization or or how are you guiding customers to the right products? <laughs> we make it very clear that we are not doctors and in terms of uh, claims and uh, you know CBD works very differently for uh, everybody but there are some common themes in terms of inflammation so if somebody has arthritis or they have sciatica we're very clear that it's not going to solve that root nerve related problem but what it does do and can do very effectively is to uh, relax and reduce the inflammation in that surrounding tissue. And that's where people are finding maybe not a, a complete reduction of pain, but a tremendous increase in mobility and flexibility, especially on the, on the baby boomer side or, or athletes who are using it as part of their recovery program. But also too, we'll get questions through Instagram, through Facebook, we get calls. Uh, we'll get emails asking for specific recommendations, and we are we're able to answer them through those those channels. Thanks. And you guys mentioned you're you were twenty percent off sort of total sales, but from a from just your your direct channel, what what is that year over year growth look like? So this year we're about forty percent up on uh, direct to consumer, so it's making up. Uh, that that sale and as we get closer to the year closer to q4 we've traditionally done about 40 percent of our sales in q4 this is a very different year but we're seeing the wholesale accounts pick up and uh our we always start the year planning for q4 because that is our biggest market so all these 
activities that we were talking about in terms of paid media and uh, new email programs is to have everything set and dialed for Q4. Uh, we have a very specific plan for the holiday season and we've been very successful in executing that. So we have a, a high degree of confidence, like I said, that we're gonna either meet or exceed what we did last year. Obviously not what we had forecast uh, out of the gate. What constraints right now? Is it um, buying ads? Is it production? Like what prevents you from doubling or tripling the size of this business next year? It, it's uh, getting, um, the reason we, we want to be part of this is because we're looking for strategic partners because that's right now, that's our limitation, uh, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, like I said, we're, we're being driven by production capacity. That's, that's really the challenge that we have right now. Um, you know, at scale, uh, we understand how, how everything, how the machinery works and how the production cycle works, but we need to add some uh, very key staff and we need to add some very specific equipment. In terms of the market, you know, uh, we make topicals and the FDA restrictions on that are, are very limited. There's no restrictions. It's only on the ingestibles where there's restrictions, but really what we need right now is the sales force assistance with that and the equipment to keep up with that sales force. So we've been throttling the business in order to keep up with what we're currently doing. But if we can get the proper equipment and the proper staff in, uh, in place, I don't think there's any stopping us. Yeah, and there's a there's a brand component for sure. You know, we've talked to uh, larger retailers and uh, Everybody loves the brand, but the packaging, uh, we can continue to improve. And, and that's where the sustainable, a little bit higher end packaging uh, comes into play. And that's what gets people excited when we start talking about that. Although they do that, love the current packaging and the design that we have. Any other questions? Awesome. Cool, oh, wow. thank you very much. Great guys, uh, thanks Kurt and Martha. We're just gonna pull you off stage right now. And uh, the three investors and I, we're gonna sync uh, over text message in a sec and we're gonna announce a winner. As soon as we announce the winner, um, we'll be in touch after the show to communicate uh, all the perks and benefits to you guys. Uh, so hang tight. Cool. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thanks guys. Okay, guys, um, the investors and I are just thinking over a group chat right now just to select who will uh, take home the official win. And as I mentioned earlier, all three brands are going to get a select number of benefits from some of our agency partners that I mentioned at the top, including Gorgeous. And there are a few additional benefits on top of that that we would love to communicate to, to the winner. Um, and so right now, and it looks like we've got two of the three answers just waiting on the third. As soon as we get that, uh, we'll be sure to announce that and then communicate all the benefits to the brand after the fact. My email is included here as well. So if there are any brands that are watching this episode right now and uh, want to apply to the next episode, please feel free to reach out. We'll also toss the link in the chat so you have that. Um, and we're going to continue to run these every three weeks or so with a couple of uh, guest appearances at a few events coming up. Awesome. So it looks like we have uh, a winner for this episode. And you know, obviously want to thank Michelle, Ken, and Jody for their great Q&A sessions. Obviously three very experienced investors, and they've done this so much in the past. Uh, we're going to give the win for this one to Koala Tree. They did a phenomenal job of, of pitching their brand. Uh, they've had years of experience in doing what they do, and they've really emphasized their direct-to-consumer approach uh, over the last little while since 2016. And um, you know, kudos to Frida Rothman and also to Life Elements. They did a phenomenal job of pitching their brand. So we want to thank both of them for being here. Definitely a tough decision. Um, all three brands, I mean, we got hundreds and hundreds of applications for this. So, um, you know, it's, it's a great uh, experience to be on the panel in and of itself. So thanks to the other two brands. Congratulations to Qualtree. Uh, we'll be in touch after the show and we'll communicate all those perks and benefits to you. Uh, but for now, we're just under an hour and a half. So perfect timing. Thanks again to Michelle, to Jody and to Ken and to the brands that participated. This was phenomenal and uh, looking forward to running this every three weeks. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Thanks, Liz. Thank you, guys. Cheers.